Standards for T1 and E1 wide area networking have been around for a very long time. In the case of T1, we call these T carrier level 1. This is something that we don't often say. We usually just refer to the line as a T1 line. And it uses something called time division multiplexing. It has digital signals coming through, and it decides what channel is going to be used based on time. And it moves between all of those channels in the same time division method. This is a standard that you often see in North America. You see it used in Japan. And you see it used in South Korea. And it's a standard that has inside of it what we call 24 separate channels. So inside of this T1 line, which runs at a 1.544 megabit per second line rate, there are 24 separate channels within it. And those 24 channels then, if you do the math, come out to be about 64 kilobits per channel. There's a lot of traffic that's going on inside of it. But you can think of it as these 24 separate channels inside of it. And you can split these up any way that you would like. You might only buy a certain number of channels to use at a particular time. Or you might have 24 separate lines coming into a facility all plugging in through this single T1 connection. In Europe, we have a different set of standards. They don't have T1 connections in Europe. We use E1 connections. And the E obviously is for Europe. This is the E carrier level 1. And instead of 24 channels, you notice there are 32 channels in an E carrier level 1. Again, you do have 64 kilobits per channel. But because you have 32 channels that are in use, you have a total of 2.048 megabits per second line rate. They all work in a similar way. You have that same time division multiplexing. But you can see the primary differences between North America and Europe are the number of channels that are supported on a single T1 line or an E1 line. If you're needing higher bandwidths than the 1.5 megabits per second that T1s might provide or the 2 megabits per second that E1 might provide, you might want to move up to a T3 line or an E3 line. The T3 is usually the next level up. That's the T carrier level 3. It usually comes into your facility on coax connections with BNC connectors at the end of those. You can see those BNCs, those bayonets that might plug in directly to the T3 equipment. This is different than the T1, which comes into a facility usually over twisted pair, which is a very common way to do it. With coax, there's a little bit more work that has to be done. But it's able to send these higher level signals through. You'll sometimes hear a T3 referred to as a DS3. And the DS3 is really referring to the data that's going over a T3 connection. The name of the circuit itself is a T3 type of connection. And you can see here we have additional throughputs that are allowed over a T3 connection. There are 28 T1 circuits that are inside of a T3. That means that we have 672 T1 channels inside of that. And that brings us to a total throughput over a DS3 connection of 44.736 megabits per second, so a significant increase in speed over just a single T1 line. An E3 connection is a similar scenario. We have 16 E1 circuits coming through for 512 E1 channels. And that comes to about 33.368 megabits per second. And usually, we are putting in a T3 or an E3 connection into a major data center so that we can then increase the total amount of throughput or bring in multiple T1 lines over a single circuit into the facility. 